Good morning, everybody. It's my privilege and my honor again this week to share with you the morning motivationals. And uh, I hope you all had an awesome weekend. I hope you enjoyed your home church. And uh, yeah, we are really excited about what the Lord is doing. And we had an awesome church meeting. And it's just so amazing to get everybody together in the presence of the Lord and be able to praise and worship together and pray together. It's just so amazing. Yeah, so this week, another week, can you believe it's almost the end of the year? Um, we're almost in the middle of November, and then it's December, and then this year's gone. And uh, we are really blessed. The Lord has kept us all safe. We are all still here. And um, yeah, so speaking about that, I think that's my topic for this week also. I know Pastor Gerard is preparing an awesome sermon for Sunday morning, speaking about the cross. And I also just want to keep my focus on the cross this week and speak to you about Thanksgiving. What is it to have a heart of, of Thanksgiving? Why are we thankful? And I think the easiest way to have a heart of Thanksgiving is keeping your eyes on Jesus Christ, on the Lamb of God, on the one who did everything for us, the one, if it wasn't for him, I would not be sitting here. So if you live your life and you keep your eyes focused on your Savior, on the Lord Jesus, it's easy to have a heart of thanksgiving and even letting that flow through your life every day, no matter where you are, whether it's at work, whether it's at home, or whether you at a bride. If you keep your eyes and your focus on the Lord Jesus, it's easy to be thankful. And speaking to someone else, loving other people, doing it out of a thankful heart for what you what you have, is so much easier. So let's speak about that Thanksgiving. Uh, I think the most amazing thing that that I can share with you is, is if we go back to the book of Revelations, Revelation 2, and verse 2 to 5, the Lord speaks to the, the church of uh, Ephesus. And the Lord said, they did everything right. They did everything right. Like, I'm sure you, maybe you are doing everything right. Or you're trying to do everything right. But the Lord had one thing against them. And he said, this I have against you, that you have lost your first love. I mean, think about, think back. Uh, for me, it's easy if I think back on the time uh, when the Lord saved me. I was just so thankful. The love I had for our Lord Jesus Christ, it could, there was nothing else that could come even close to that. And that appreciation, that thanksgiving that I had in my heart, that I just want to share it with everybody else. How many of you have lost that? I mean, is the Lord holding this against you that you have lost your first love? You see, love is a flame that's inside your heart and sometimes... We even get so busy, we get distracted with the things that we do that we forget about our first love. I know if we go to the New Testament, uh, we read about Martha and Mary, and uh, where Martha was complaining about her sister Mary, and she asked the Lord Jesus, I'm doing everything. But that's not what the Lord wanted. Are you doing everything? Are you so busy? That maybe you don't even have time to get to sell. Maybe you don't have time to go to church. Maybe you don't have time to fellowship with the people that the Lord has placed around you. You are so busy. You are losing your focus. You are forgetting about your first love. You see, the Lord wants to be first in everything. I think Pastor Quibus also this weekend in his sermon spoke about the first. What is your first love? What is the thing that you are willing to give up time for? Is it the Lord Jesus Christ? Or is it something else? It can be a hobby. It can be many things. But I'm not here this morning to, to tell you what you are doing wrong. I want you to go stand in front of a mirror. I know the, 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 the word of the Lord is like a mirror. You stand in front of it and have a look. Where are you? Ask the Lord. To search into your heart. I mean, that's the only way, if you are honest with yourself, it's the only way you can get help. 
I always think back uh, of what I learned about uh, trying to help somebody that's uh, addicted to alcohol or addicted to drugs. The first thing they have to do is they have to admit they have a problem and then they have to ask for help. Otherwise, you cannot help them. And I think it's the same with us. No matter what your problem is, the first thing you have to do is to admit that you have a problem. The second thing is you, you've got to be prepared to get help. You see, we just sometimes we have to lay aside our pride and just allow the Lord to come and do the work. I know the Lord has put so many people on my path that speak into my life. And I know it's not nice every time somebody tells you that you've done something wrong or they don't like the way you are speaking to them. Or maybe you were too aggressive in, in an argument. But why not just lay it down? If somebody tells you that you did something wrong, don't just get angry. Don't just start defending yourself. I mean, the word tells us, be slow to answer. Take it in. Is there any truth in what they are saying? And if there's truth in it, ask them, can you help me? We need each other. But most of all, we need the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, sometimes we are so busy with everything else around us. And I mean, this world can keep us busy for sure. And that we forget about the Lord. We forget about our relationship with Him. And all He wants, He wants us to just to come back and make Him our first love. Let the Lord be the first thing you think of in the morning. You know, sometimes I lie in bed and a song will pop up in my head and I don't know where the song comes from. Then I really have to focus on a song that I want to have in my head. Because I know the first thing that I'm going to think of in the morning has to be this. And you know how awesome it is just to wake up with a, with a worship song. And you just remember what the Lord has done for you. And you've got this thank, thanksgiving. And you wake up and maybe you, you like me, you'll stand in the shower and just thank the Lord again for saving me. Thank you Lord that every day your mercies for me are new. I mean, that changes my whole day because it's not about me. It's about him, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And then I'm going to end off with an uh, awesome part. Don't let your eyes be the thing that determines your thanksgiving. Don't let your circumstances or the things you see every day determine whether you are thankful or not. I, I remember myself sometimes you focus on a problem this problem starts to dissolve everything else around me nothing seems to matter i just have to sort out this problem i'll forget about everything i'll forget to call my wife i'll forget meetings that i have just because of this problem and i realized that i cannot do that i have to put it aside focus on what is important not about what has to be done right now what is important? What, is, what deserves my priority right now? And I feel in my life at this stage, I need to be thankful. Thankful to the Lord for everything. Thank, thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you, Lord, that I'm breathing every day. Thank you, Lord, that I've got brothers and sisters who love me every day. Thank you for my family. There are so many things. And even the Lord Jesus, if I read uh, uh, John 6, verse 11, and I'm just going to read it to you like I've got it here. It says, then Jesus took the loaves. So you remember this was where Jesus had, I think, all these people in front of him. Thousands of people in front of him. And they were hungry and he had to feed them. And all they brought him was this fish and bread. I mean, think for yourself. If somebody has to do that to you. You had a gathering with thousands of people. And you have to give them food. And somebody gives you a couple of fish and a couple of loaves of bread. What would be the first thing? I know I would, I would start to stress, but not Jesus. What did he do? He took the bread. And what it really says, Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks to God, and distributed them to the people. Afterwards, he did the same with the fish. So he took the fish, he gave thanks to God for the fish, and he gave it to the people. And it says here, And they all ate as much as they wanted. So today, I want to leave you with this thought. If you give thanks to God for everything that you have, even if it's a little, He will take care of the rest. He will make sure that you will have more than enough. So let us pray. Thank you, Lord, that 
This morning we are here with a thankful heart, Lord, and we just thank you for everything that we have, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the little things in our lives and thank you this morning that we can take these little things and say thank you, God, for what we have. And then we can go on and we can give it out, Lord. And we would know that what we have will be more than enough for what you have planned for us. Thank you, Lord, that we can put your kingdom first in our lives, Lord. Because we know that you will take care of all the rest of the things that we need. Thank you, God, that you first love us and teach us how to love those around us just like you love us. Lord, we give you all the honor. We give you all the glory, Lord. And we thank you for this day and this week that is ahead. And we praise you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. I hope you have an awesome day. I can't wait to, to share the rest of my message with you again on Wednesday. And may you be blessed and be thankful and go back to your first love. Be blessed. Bye-bye.